And so over the weekend, myself, JT, his lovely lady Jade, and little Finn took a trip over to Doncaster for the video game market. I have bought myself a bit of new tech, my new little GoPro here. So I took it along just to capture some footage and see what I got, basically point it through its pace and see what it can do. So here's some footage of the video game market in Doncaster and afterwards myself and Jack will do a, a bit of a pickups video of what we bought and why. Anyway, anyway, so um, I didn't think I was going to this until the last second. I was able to get a train to Huddersfield the day before as there were strikes on the day of. So I couldn't get from where I live to Doncaster. But I went halfway the day before and then JT drove the rest of the way the day after. So I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Right, when we got there, it was busy and we were in before the 12 o'clock entries. There's two entries, 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock. We got the early bird tickets. We got there about quarter past 11. Uh, hopefully, they don't, don't get in so much of a queue. We got in a queue. Anyway, but I mean, it went quick enough. I mean, it's a good and a bad thing. It was so busy. You got to be there. You got to get in early. You get the good stuff. But the bad thing is, you know, there's too many people. It's, it's hard to get to the stalls. You're trying not to elbow people. People are trying not to elbow you, push you out of the way, stuff like that. But I mean, everyone's very civil uh, there. It was nice. But, um, on the good side of things, the more people go, the more times we put these events on, so keep going. So there were a few things missing from this Retro Games Fair that, that make the day just that little bit better. There was a lack of Super Nintendo games, which is my favourite console to collect for. But I like to like get them boxed. You know, I, I don't mind them being a bit battered stuff, like shows character, but there was a, it was just a lack of them. There's a few stalls with a few games, and obviously the big hitter ones, like you, ones that cost, you know, they've got three digits. Alan Jacklin's Retro Games wasn't there. That's a big miss. It's a big hole in the Retro Fair. I'll take up from here for a bit, mate. Don't be worry. Hi, everyone. The co host of the Casual Report, CEO of the Casual Report, guy puts videos on YouTube, whatever you want to call me. And like Jam's been saying, we went the Retro Game Fair, video game market, Doncaster Dome. Bit of a quiet one for me. I don't know what Jam said. Uh, it's. The main, the main man wasn't there. Alan, the, the all the Japanese shit wasn't there. He was to get a few Japanese GameCube games and a few things like that. Just not there. There's some PS2 stand. I like, have nothing against the PS2 stand. It was, you know, just adequate. But I mean, when you, if you have to see Alan's stand to to truly appreciate, it, I believe. So without him, there's a big blow for me. And also, there's also a stand there which has a lot of rare stuff like the. The, the gentlemen that have the Castlevania Symphony of the Night, Symphony of the Night um, game for like 500 quid and they've got a lot of rather rare ones as well uh, there. They also weren't there. I'm sure I'll see Alan in the next one. Uh, so I think it's about time I'll show you guys what I picked up at the Doncaster Gaming Market. The first game on this list is International Track and Field for the PlayStation 1. This game gave your fingers biceps back in the day, much like the Track and Field games that came before that. 100 meter race was just pure insanity of smashing two buttons faster than your mate. And it added pressure of timing when it came to hurdles, synchronizing button presses for swimming, or when it came to long jump, javelin, or shot put. You throw another aspect in there where you have to smash the buttons, time the jump for throws, and then hit the angle 
that maximum range. I played so much of this back in the day with my mates. It was a regular go-to game, especially with the PlayStation multi-tap for a four-player showdown. An absolute bargain for four of the King's English quid. I did buy a few things. Probably the least amount I've spent there, money-wise, ever. But it is what it is. So we'll just go. I'm going to show you a few things. I'm, well, the things I bought for me, my son, and my beautiful girlfriend Jade. For me, little lad, Donkey Kong plush, mate. Is he chilling or what? He gets a good time out of it. Uh, it was from there's a lot of plush stands here, there as well, but a random Pokemon as well. So for Jade, there's his uh, arcade sticker. One of the, the Bubble Bubble Queen, mate. That's what I know. I'm sure Jam's showing you his by now. Or if he hasn't, Jam's got two. Indeed, I did buy two. Bought myself Street Fighter 2. Little known fact that I'm a big Street Fighter fan. I also bought myself Donkey Kong because it's one of the greatest arcade games ever made. So I could not not pick this one up. Just got to figure out where to put them. Here's some more pickup. Capcom Fighting Jam, or Evolution if you live on the other side of the pond. A bit of damage on the box, but nothing major. Now, I've never played this game. I've known it's existed, but I thought it was just another variant that wouldn't live up to the main series or the likes of Marvel vs. Capcom or X-Men vs. Street Fighter. This basically is a mini Capcom Smash Brothers from what I can tell. We've got a mix of Street Fighter 2, Street Fighter 3, Street Fighter Alpha slash Zero, Dark Stalkers and Red Earth with four characters representing each game. The animations look good, not like Street Fighter Third Strike good, but they look good. Gameplay looks solid and you can beat up big dinosaurs, so I'm definitely going to give this one a go. Street Fighter Third Strike is still the king, no doubt, no questions. Followed closely by Street Fighter 4. Moving on, Spec Ops Ranger Elite. This game isn't anything special, but the buddy system and the teamwork needs to complete missions were on point for the PS1 days. This is the earliest that I can recall a shooter needing a strategy and it wasn't a run and gun. Me and my brother played the hell out of this game. This for me set a standard for games to come. Single player mode on this also used the buddy system but you had to switch between your characters and it definitely wasn't as fun as timing sniper shots with the AI as it would be with an actual person. Moving on, Jade bought some Pokemon cards. I'm gonna stifle through them now for you. About 30 cards here. I guess maybe Jam can fast forward it because he's the producer of this. There's Chinchou. This is from the Silver Tempest set, everybody. Ponyta. Mm. <laughs> but he, um, I don't, I still generally don't know that one. She's quite rare for me. Uh, Dracini. I had high hopes for this pack. It was the first card that came out. I thought Dragonite was going to be waiting for us at the end, but it wasn't. Um, Feebas. It's a nice one, mate. Three rares. Didn't get a double rare pack, which is unfortunate. This is Verizite. Verizian, I think that's how you say it. But, uh, when, you're in, when you're in it for the the full arts. Like this chestnut, mate. It's quite nice. The cherry on the t cake is the Mawile or... My Wily Cyrus might usually get uh, the pack of three with the like the nice shiny one on the front of the coin, but the dude that had them was like PayPal, friends and family, but there's no fucking signal, so I couldn't pay him, so I didn't get him off him. A pop. I don't buy a lot of, I say this, there's like fucking, there's at least six or seven pops on the shelf next to me. Zamasu from Dragon Ball Super. Now, you must not really wonder why Zamasu from Dragon Ball Super, but that seems a bit random ever since Dragon Ball Fighters and his introduction in that. I know it's Fuse Zamasu, don't get me wrong. he has been my main ever since and I've had a soft pop for him. And I've always wanted a Zamasu pop and never, ever found it in the store. It's the first time I've seen it IRL and I had to get it. It was only like 12 quid, so. So my next pickup, although I did complain about lack of Super Nintendo games, which there were, I did pick up Total Carnage on the Super Nintendo. And I was also today years old when I learned that this game is the sequel to one of my favourite games that I used to play as a child, Smash TV. Hmm, never, I, no clue, didn't know. I do enjoy the extra nostalgia that comes with the original pricing tag, so shout out Woolworths. It was the artwork that caught my eye. I looked it over and I put it back at first, but I circled back round and picked it up again. I'd say this is a roguelike somewhat. It definitely has got like the old Robotron vibes, 
you can easily compare it to the modern day twin stick shooters and just looking at the gameplay and that you can see the DNA of Smash TV running through it. It's definitely a midway game. The next game I picked up was Pilot Wings. Now I don't have much of a history with this game. I think the only time I've ever played it was a 3DS when the 3DS was coming out. It was like a kiosk. But the box was in really good condition. It's got the original Nintendo sticker on it and it cost me 15 quid. So I was definitely going to pick it up because it's one of them essential must have games for your Super Nintendo collection. I'd say it's an early flight sim with a not so serious approach to it. The only relatable thing to this game for me is the music and of course I know it from Smash Brothers. The game does look like good fun and it's on Nintendo Switch Online so I haven't got an excuse not to have a go now. Tired of I think it tried to get on the GoldenEye bandwagon hype thing. Uh, it's not too far out from that. 2002. Not, not a million miles away. Uh, imagine they said, oh, let's try and reinvent, try and get a bit of that golden eye pie. Uh, obviously it didn't, but I mean, this game was fine. It was it was good, for, especially for a licensed game. But this wasn't horrific, and it was four or five quid. I mean, that's one I had. I'm trying to rebuild my GameCube collection because when I was younger, I decided I don't need this. I'm going to trade stuff in to buy new stuff. And now I wish I just left it and just didn't bother. And now some of the games are triple digits, so did manage to buy a Japanese game, Romancing Saga. It's nice, 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 mate. There you go. The manual's like this fucking pamphlet thing. Don't know if you can see that. That's really cool, isn't it? And on the back, it's like a map. Which is very, very fucking cool. Like, I've never going to finish this game. I'd, I'd be able to get through it without looking at a garden age. Over the years, I've developed like a sort of small collection of Japanese uh, games. That's all I got. Totaling about 50 quid, something like that, between me and Jade, which is about 25 quid each. You can find me on the casual report, twitch.tv slash the, the casual report. There's an underscore there. There might be an underscore jam. Sort it out on screen, mate. Um, or on YouTube. Just search you. Just casual report on YouTube. Which I might put a link in the description if he's nice. It wasn't the best Rip and game market for me, but I mean, I always have a good time at these things. It's to meet people and talk about the passion we love with people. But anyway, thank you so much. Back to you, Jim. Up the toffees, mate. There will be no upping of any toffees on this channel, Jack. Thank you very much. Right, so a uh, few last things I did buy. I bought a little plushy thing. I don't know why, it's just an impulse buy. It's from Pac-Man and the Ghostly Adventures. I think it's a 3DS game. I could be wrong. Maybe it were you. I'm pretty sure it's 3DS. Anyway, tell me if I'm wrong in the comments. I did try and video this like all pretty and like production style, but I've got two dogs and um, it was hard to do. I also got The Last of Us. This is just basically a replacement for one I've already got because I destroyed the insert with some tea a few years ago. So uh, yes, it's a nice crispy version. Anyway, uh, I appreciate everyone watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.